Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of How to Watch a Movie as a Christian. I'm Riley. I'm Charlie. And I'm Ben. How to Watch Annihilation as a Christian. Now, we're in the car. Why are we in the car, Ben? We're taking Charlie? you to the airport, my friend. Riley's yeah. got to go to school. I got to go to school. So we're uh, shooting this in the car. Hopefully the audio, the video turns out good. Well, it's our pleasure to introduce our friend Charlie. How are you doing, Charlie? I'm doing good. I just realized you're going to school. Yeah. I'm skipping school. You're skipping school right here. Yeah. <laughs> Shout like out a, to your like teachers. It's like a fun little, uh, yeah. I, I tried to get my I'm brother sorry. to turn in my homework for me. Didn't happen. So He, he just refused? Just going to have to take the, take the hit on this Coleman. one. He forgot it at home. Now, is that, do you feel okay with that? Because what you're graduating, so therefore it what doesn't matter. Or? It's kind of just like whatever. I'll figure it out. <laughs> oh I have a good dear. grade in the class. I'll make I'm it sorry, work. Andy. And what Jen? class is it though? It's math. It's like a basic math class. Wow. And you graduate in June. Yeah, I saved like I saved my math classes for the end, so I'm finishing out right now. Was that a good choice or a bad choice? No, it's terrible. Don't recommend it. Why? Because it's just that's not what I want to be. I want to be having fun classes. Instead, I'm doing math. That makes math sense. Math is fun. Ben, I can barely hear you up there. Oh, that'll cause problems, won't it? <laughs> <laughs> Just make sure to speak up. Okay. Okay. Now, yeah, we're heading down to the airport. <laughs> <laughs> Alex on camera. Say hi, Alec. Hey, guys. Hi, Alec. Oh, sorry. I gotta fill up with gas. Right I gotta fill up the car with gas. Okay, so Annihilation is a science fiction film that came out, what? 2018, 18, I yeah. think. Directed by one of my favorite filmmakers, Alex Garland. So good. And it tells the story of a, of a girl named Lena, who um, is a biologist who goes into what's called the Shimmer to explore some crazy alien phenomena and stuff like that. Now, the, the idea for talking about this was from Charlie, who you watch it for the first time. I actually, okay, it was actually my second time. I watched it in theaters when it came out. It was really? the year I graduated high school. Yeah. Freaked me out. Haven't watched it since. So here we are four or five years later. I watched it with my roommates and it was a little less scary, but just as confusing as ever. And so I posted a review of it saying something like, I, I don't smart. understand you this. Said, I'm not smart enough. You said, this. I'm not smart enough to understand yeah. this movie. I watched it for my first time last night. It was my first time. Really? Yeah. Wow. Meanwhile, it's one of Riley's favorite movies yeah definitely of the last 10 years so it makes for some good conversation yeah good conversation which you know we'll have to continue after I finish <laughs> filming up here. so um when it comes to annihilation it's a it's a sci-fi and it's kind of hard sci-fi do you guys know the difference between hard sci-fi and soft sci-fi nope i'm my guess would be that soft sci-fi is still kind of like Easier to grasp or believable, maybe? Yeah, soft sci-fi would be Star Wars. Yeah. Adventure, kind of really easy going characters, real soft magic or technology system. There's no like hard and fast rules to it, right? It's the force. It's almost it's, it's no, almost magical. It's right? no Mistborn. It's not like yeah, that would be hard fantasy, right? Or high fantasy. Gotcha. Okay. Um, whereas hard sci-fi would be like Dune. Like really strict rules, really fleshed out world. Um, almost, almost a lot of hard sci-fi is kind of like 2001: A Space Odyssey, where it's like this will happen. The world will evolve, grow, and progress to be like this. A lot of hard sci-fi tries to explore what the future will be like, and this is like that. Where they are, it's super high concept. It's almost, um, it's not character driven. Would you say? No. And in fact, I watched one of the interviews with the director, and he said in the book that it's based off, they don't even have names. No, they yeah, don't. The, the characters biologist. don't have names. Yeah. The biologist, the psychologist. I read the book last year. Yeah, it's really trippy, really weird. And um, so th the story is that an alien something or whatever has landed at the southern border of the United States uh, along the coast, what's called the Southern Reach. And so the the army has kind of sent people into this dome, this shimmer, to figure out what's going on. But no one's coming back. Everyone's dying, except for one dude, and that's Lena's husband. Poe Dameron. Poe Dameron, yes, played by Oscar Isaac. 
So he comes back and she's something's wrong with him. She doesn't know what's wrong with him. So she wants to go into the shimmer to explore what happened. And on top of that, she's a biologist, scientist. So she joins this team of five women who go in to explore the shimmer and all kinds of craziness happens. What kind of, what stuff was like the most memorable? The bear. Right. Well, the, bear, the bear, yeah. There's like weird, crazy animals that y- you come to find out is like species evolving together. Okay, to well, the like first one. Let's talk about the first one. It was the alligator. A, it was like a albino Al- alligator. Yeah, like an yeah. alligator with that shark was like, teeth. With shark teeth, and yeah. it was it was like really bloodied and bruised and messed up. But it was like really big, and it grabbed a girl by her backpack and pulled her into the water. Yeah. So right off the bat, you're like, oh, okay, some and that's crazy the thing stuff. Is, this is a sci-fi movie, but it it also is a horror film. It's there's scary. A lo- there's a lot of scary moments, jump scares, creepy weirdness. There's like a corpse of a dude who's like come blown apart and he's covered in fungus and stuff like that. It's gnarly, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That. Here's the thing. A lot of hard sci-fi is like this. It's idea driven. Not character, not even story driven. It's more about the ideas. And the main idea of Annihilation is the idea of self-destruction and they talk about this a lot in the in the movie the characters talk about it and the the in fact the movie opens with a microscope picture of cells dividing and lena the main character who's a professor of biology explains that these are cancer cells and cancer cells divide and they replicate each other until they destroy whatever is, you know, um, whatever's their host, right? And so cancer becomes sort of like a, uh, a metaphor for self-destruction. And what Charlie was saying was that in the middle of this dome, there, all of the DNA and cells within it uh, mix together. So humans are becoming trees, and trees are becoming humans, and alligators are becoming sharks. And this bear, right, tears out the throat of one of the characters, and then her voice becomes part of the bear. And so when the bear shows up again, it's like screaming, it's like, help, 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 me. help me. And it's terrifying. Yeah. Like that. Because they, you? yeah, they think it's her, so they go around the corner, and then boom, bear, done. Yeah. yeah. That free, that stuck with yeah. me. That this, image. Yeah. The scariest yeah. part to me was the end, but we'll get to that. Okay, sure. yeah, we'll get yeah. to that. So, uh, think of that metaphor of everything mixing together, cancer cells replicating and combining and until it destroys something. That's a, that's a picture of how we all destroy ourselves. And so the main point that the film makes is that all of these women, they all practice self-destruction in one way or another. And so the way I know that is there's this conversation that happens between Lena and another character when they're rowing a boat. And so that that girl says, you know, what brought you here? And she says, you know, my husband, you know, died or whatever, I lost him. And she's like, oh, I figured you would have some baggage. We all have baggage. We all come with our issues. That person over there, uh, she, you know, has lost someone. I lost my daughter. That other character, she's suicidal, and you see the scars all up and down her forearms. And and the the leader of the group, she's got cancer, and she's about to die. So the point is that all of these characters have this thing in their life that's destroying them, just slowly killing them, right? And what happens is, throughout the film, each of the characters dies in a way that mirrors their self-destruction. So for example, the, the girl who's suicidal, she's got scars on her forearms. What happens is she discovers these trees that have become humans. And while she's looking at them... Like she, in the shape of a human, they're yeah, like yeah. frozen in time. Well, they've absorbed human DNA, and so now they have the shape of a human being. They're these plants growing in human shape, right? And so what, what happens is she starts to grow plants out of the scars. Yeah, it's crazy. Did you notice that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's like it's a it's an image of like her Giving desire up. to die, her, her giving up. 
has overtaken her and killed her, right? <laughs> See, that's like, I, I did, I did not connect that. Yeah, and they, they don't, that's the thing is, it's really subtle. They don't point the camera at it. They don't make it obvious. You have to kind of notice it. Yeah, there's no, like, sp- there's no spoon feeding this kind of stuff to you at all. So like the girl who's um, kind of a more of a military girl, her issue is she doesn't trust anyone. And what happens to her is that she ties them all up. She starts to become paranoid and then she gets eaten by the bear, right? Um, the other girl, the girl who lost her daughter, um, she's the one who gets carried off by the bear, right? Well, when Lena discovers her body, she looks up and she sees two deer, one bigger, one smaller. Who's that? That's her and her daughter. What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. And I then, need to watch it again. I'll probably enjoy it more. And then the main character, uh, the, the leader, uh, Fetris, I think her name is, she is the one who makes it to the lighthouse first. And she conjoins with the alien substance or whatever and kind of explodes in this spectacle of cells and stuff like right. that. So it's like symbolic of her kind of just going to her doom, um, kind of accepting her fate as she ha- she has in real life because she's terminally ill with cancer. And she for her, it was always a suicide mission. So um, in the interviews, the director thought, okay, I want to make... I want to make a movie that's all about self-destruction. And let me wa- let me write a story that that kind of shows how we all tend to destroy ourselves. And so that's the theme. The theme is like let's just put in a visual format a picture of how human beings tend to destroy themselves. And what happens to Lena, the main character, is that she's been having an affair on her husband. And what happens is she defeats the alien entity but she carries its DNA back with her to her marriage so it's this kind of image of you can seemingly get over something and conquer something and have a struggle but rise above it but there's always this thing within you this this tendency to destroy your own life didn't when the husband come back though it wasn't it, it wasn't, wasn't him. him it was no, kind of him. like yeah okay it's the alien who has replaced his body with its own. Yeah. Ooh, freaky. Do we still have to say spoilers? Or this movie's been out long enough, right? I think this is definitely a spoiler conversation. <laughs> yeah. Very big spoiler conversation. But honestly, maybe it'll be helpful because then when you go to watch the movie, instead of just being confused, you'll be like, whoa. And it'll be a little more impactful or, yeah. I don't know. Maybe it'll be good. Could. Do you think this movie is one of those truly profound this is what i struggle with actually is it profound or are we kind of like whoa dude (laughs) that's crazy where we're just like i don't know it's not as profound as we think it is at least that i think yeah i think it's more the second it's more like oh well i don't know what's tell me what's profound i don't know i think there's something profound about seeing a human struggle just simply illustrated right like in the scripture we all have the sin nature it's that tendency to self-destruction that's sin right sin does that and he's just putting that on display right and he's using cancer or cellular mutation as sort of like a metaphor for that so it makes me go oh that's i don't know i i don't know why i think it's cool I don't, and I don't know if it helps me with my struggles. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think, Charlie? I think it. I think it's profound to an extent, but I would probably agree with Ben in that it's not. I mean, it's not one of those films that has like changed the world or like blown all these people's minds. It's blown a few minds, uh, and I think it can be really profound when we take a deeper look at it. But it seems a little bit inaccessible for some people. And so I think that restricts it from having the effect that maybe it could have. Let's ask that question then. What makes this film seem pretentious? That was the word you used. Yeah. <laughs> so what is it? Well, what I, makes it seem pretentious? Yeah. I watched the interview with the director, and that's what made me gave me that vibe because he's sitting he's sitting with his hand out like this. Is he wearing a like a and, turtleneck? Uh, yeah, something like that. And everyone like will say jokes to him, or even he'll say joke, and then he's just like. Just doesn't <laughs> smile, never laughs until the very end. And uh, he's like, and "Stop! It's like, my art." Yeah, it's like people asking these questions, just kind of like, "Yeah, well, like, ma, 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 ma." It's like, okay, get over yourself a little bit. 
And so I could see that makes me gives me the impression that his movies maybe he's a a little bit pretentious and like here's this big thing I'm trying to tell, but it's like you'll only get it if you're kind of like smart. You're as like, smart as me. Yeah. And I think the you kind of have to come to terms with the fact that people are just pretty dumb and need a lot of stuff spoon-fed to them. But then if you do it too much, like we were saying he did with his latest movie, Men, it's too much. And then it's like, okay, like... Do not see that. Yeah. Do not watch that. Uh, yeah. And so there's a careful balance of being interpretive... Inter- interpretive? Enough so that people can kind of feel smart and digest it and get different things out of it and it makes this impact but also easy enough to understand or maybe spoon feed them a little bit to kind of get them onto that path i so love when it's too much in either direction it's I love either that. pretentious and way too confusing or way too obvious and everyone's like okay whatever like you didn't teach me anything new yeah because it's true that you can have those movies where it's like okay that was cool but uh, clearly i didn't understand that and it's like your love letter to hollywood whatever like cool <laughs> thanks you're talking thanks about once upon a time i am i am taking a jab at that <laughs> every time we walk out of the theater i go with my brother and some other people every time we saw puss in boots last weekend oh that was just a love letter to hollywood <laughs> every movie <laughs> Coleman's amazing. Every movie's a love letter to Hollywood. But then there's said. also the movies that it is kind of like, I wish you would have let me think a little more, and you kind of just were shoving something down my throat. So I, I do like, and it's it's not that it's spoon feeding when it, it there's just a little bit in there. You're just kind of gently walking me through what you're saying. This one was fully, I, I think. Almost at a distance. At a distance. On purpose, almost. Your letterbox review, Charlie, was, I'm not smart enough for this movie. And, you know, no one really wants to hear that. I don't think he would <laughs> like to hear that. But it's totally true. I felt the same way. I was like, great, I'm excited to unpack this on the podcast. Well, no, I had to immediately go to YouTube. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Arrival, or uh, Annihilation Ending Explained. An- Annihilation Explained. And honestly, I-, I feel like I did get some of the themes, but... Um, yeah, it definitely is a little bit more of a here was here's my art and now interpret it any which way you want, but not that way. You know, it's like it's kind of like do whatever you want, but it's it not in actually. A, in almost in a funny way, uh, things that are pretentious actually tend towards being preachy in a way because that's how his next film is Men that came out last year. Do not see it, please. Fair, you've been warned. Um, it's just too on the nose, right? It's almost so full of itself with such a message mm. or something to say that it's not its not subtle enough, actually. And it's not that I want it to be un- indiscernible. It's that I want characters that I relate to. I think, wouldn't that be what you're saying, though, is it's not about spoon-feeding me or making it obvious. It's about giving me a way in yeah, through a character. Yeah. Did you feel like it lacked that? Yeah, definitely. And like you're saying, it's not character driven. And so I think when we take a deeper look at it, there is a beautiful message there and something cool, but it takes so much and it's harder to relate to that it kind of takes you out of it. And you have to really do a lot of the digging, whereas you see some of these great movies and it's like, I can apply this to my life. What they're going through, even if it's completely different, this makes me think of a struggle that I have in my life. And that's when it hits people hard. It's almost like with this movie, the main character, Lena, she's having an affair, blah, blah, blah. I'm, but there is no exploration of why is she doing that? What's motivating her? Are they fighting about something? Like, why? You don't... Yeah, it was just distance and work, but... Just distance? It wasn't really... And I'm like, I don't really root for their marriage. I don't know if they've ever been happy, other than when, what, he was tickling her? <laughs> In the flashback. So cute. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like... That not that a thing, though, where a filmmaker wants to show you these people are in love? And so they're, like, laughing or something. And I'm like, what is that? Let's like, have okay. them tickle in their undies. <laughs> Let's have That's them tickle. Love. <laughs> That's true love. Yeah, there's totally... I, even, honestly, I love Natalie Portman. And she did a good job in the movie. But her character, like you were saying, seems really distant. Pretty, like, serious, deadpan. To the point where it's not even, like oh that's who she is like you can't it's you're struggling to kind of get to know her almost in the way I felt like I was struggling to get to know Alex Garland in that interview it kind of gave me a similar vibe have you seen Devs? no I haven't oh bro Devs is his TV show 
And yeah. it's it's very similar. In it's that on way. HBO. It was, yeah. Every character is uber serious, Hulu. cold uh, filmmaking, all idea driven. I saw this, I saw Annihilation in theaters, and I was like, whoa, blown away. But I will say, watching it two days ago, kind of in prep for this, I, I was less stoked on it than I was when I first watched it. Well, tap into that first watch. I walk out of that movie. I no one held my hand through that. Hold my hand a little. What are I think what are I, the big things? Well, I think for me it's like there are some movies that are profound in what they are saying. But the thing that keeps you coming back to a movie is how it says it. That the movies you rewatch over and over, which would be what? What what's a movie you've seen the most? Uh like Spy Kids or something? Spy Kids. No way. Are you for real? <laughs> Knowing Probably you, I was going to say Nacho Libre. Yeah, Nacho Libre. Whoa. Oh, Knives Out. I love Knives Out. Knives Over the out. Hedge. Shrek 2. That's my final answer. <laughs> Shrek 2. You're hilarious. I would say for I me, think Lord of the Rings. That's genuinely oh a really... Oh, gosh. You guys should do Shrek 2. Shrek 2. There's a lot to unpack there. So good. Wow. But see, what, what, com- what brings you coming back to that stuff? It's usually humor... Um, and relatability of characters. I don't know, stuff that like assimilates into your consciousness where you start to be that, you know, that SpongeBob meme that says, it's like that SpongeBob episode where, Ben, how many times have I done that? Oh, just, (laughs) yeah, a lot. And you say, it's like that office episode where. Uh, Yeah, that's true. And it's, that's my point is like, it's, it's, it's helped you see the world differently and I would say that even though what Annihilation has to say about self-destruction and how we tend to destroy ourselves even when we see it doing it and that's the sin nature Romans 7 is about that Paul says I don't want to do this but I keep doing it and I want to do this but I can't do it and then he says oh wretched man that I am who will deliver me from this body of death? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, who has redeemed me. That's good. So he's like in the middle of this civil war within. And we all have that. And I think that's what Annihilation is about. about. But I wouldn't say I want to watch it beyond the five times I've watched it. Five Be- times? Yeah. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, Annihilation? Yeah, I wouldn't want to watch it more than the five times I've watched it. Is that a lot? That's a lot. That is a lot. (laughs) Well, I liked it. Yeah, great. That makes sense. That makes sense. I would say as I get older, I I don't know if I'm... It doesn't keep me coming back. Right? It's not up there with SpongeBob and Lord of the Rings and, you know, things like that. Do you think you've grown out of it? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. You know, when you first... Come, come to know the Lord and grow in faith at 18, 19 years old you start to debate doctrine and salvation and blah 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 <laughs> and soon in your 30s you just want to follow Jesus yeah let's get so over true. intellectual garbage amen to that <laughs> so it's kind of like that yeah that's good let's talk about unless you have anything else I was just going to say let's talk about the ending because well, okay, two things. One, the soundtrack is super good. The, like, acoustic. Yeah. At the end. I love that. But then at the end is... It's <laughs> crazy. Yeah. It terrified like weird, me. Weird choreographed dance sequence. Yeah, they're imitating each other, but it's like... It's Can freaky. I tell you the point that scared me the most? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, Bear, obviously scary. The, um... The cutting that guy open. Oh, you know, yeah. kind of horrifying. But the part, weirdly, that scared me the most, it made me feel like I was having a fever dream, was um, she's doing that dance with that um, Wii Sports guy. And... (laughs) And... I was going to say, it's like a Capri Sun. (laughs) What? What? Those Capri Sun commercials where they're made of metal. No. (laughs) What? They're like gelatinous characters and they, they turn to kids it looks like no a- i don't know what <laughs> commercials here i have not seen that sheesh there's a wee sports guy and uh <laughs> they're dancing and then she's like sidestepping and then it sidesteps 
and then she moves to the door and like rushes to the door and you're like that was kind of scary pins her against the door but weirdly the part that freaked me out the most is when so she's doing the sidesteppy thing and then she takes a step back and that character takes a step forward yeah Yeah. something about that gave me horrible chills yeah i thought that is horrifying like that's the moment where you know i'm trapped i do not know what to do pinned against a wall and i don't exactly know how she got out of that so she like tricked it she tricked it yeah so think about it bigger picture right it helps to think of this movie as like a wikipedia article alien crashes to earth its whole plan is to use its dna and these powers of replication or whatever to imitate and absorb a human being and then in so doing infiltrate planet earth so it can take over the earth okay that's the plan of the alien so what happens is they get into this imitation dance in front of a mirror kind of a thing uh her her and the alien and so it's imitating her now that whole scene was choreographed by like a broadway ballet Uh choreographer so it's really that's crazy and the music by ben salisbury is his name oh it's haunting it's weird it's out of nowhere too because like the music you said for the music for the whole movie is like acoustic and kind of weird it's like peaceful but mysterious yeah uh, and then here it's just like synthesizers going, you know. And I think this is where hard sci-fi comes in. So many hard sci-fi movies have a acid trip ending, and that's like 2001: Space Odyssey. The ending is insanity. So stuff like that. But so she tricks it by grabbing the phosphorus grenade, loading it, and then putting it into its hand but it doesn't know what it is and because it's a phosphorus grenade it's got phosphorus like chemicals and material inside it so when it starts to burn it takes the phosphorus dna and cells inside itself and then you see all around the landscape everything starts to burn in the same way because it's taking the phosphorus inside there's some itself. there's some mirroring here to her uh, husband and the way he died, right? Yeah. Because the, the, she has him crisscross in the same spot. Yep. Sit yep. down. So he blew himself, or he burned himself yeah, by he the blew same grenade? Up with the same grenade, yeah. But she used the same weapon to destroy the whole to destroy shebang. It, yeah. Okay. And then, at, so she destroys it, thinking, okay, we won. But the thing is, her husband's not her husband, it's actually the alien creature. And she has the alien DNA inside her. And so at the very end, when they hug, you see within their eyes the DNA still there. So that's the Crazy. Could you lower this for a second here? I need to merge. Thank you. Pause. Cut this part. I was getting worried when we hit that traffic. Are you done? My foot's both of my feet are asleep. Alex, oh take him on for the team. You're doing good, dude. I forgot that I, we were actually going somewhere and I needed to get off, get off the I have plenty of time. Here we go. One more lane. Wasn't there a whole thing... Oh, should we not start again yet? No, go ahead. Okay, I was just going to say, wasn't there a whole thing about um, the alien? Like, we assume... Uh, that everything's like out to get us and destroy and so we need to destroy first but this alien thing is peaceful and it just wants harmony what was the deal with that okay that's right at the end no must have been in the beginning I think it was the girl that turned into a tree no it's the scientist the the dude from uh, Doctor Strange oh yeah yeah he's like what did it want and they said she said um, it doesn't want to destroy everything it just wants to change it Right, right. And we're so afraid of change, we just want to, like, yeah, proactively destroy whatever, like, steps in the... And like, said, mess it up. Change it into what? And she says... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I Helpful. don't know what that meant. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. Yeah, there's a lot... There's definitely a lot whoa, that's, like, cool, beyond. bro. It's kind of, whoa. You know? Is yeah. that is that profound? I don't know. Is it profound? It could be, honestly. That was another one of those things that's, like... 
whoa, I think that's really deep. But I don't really that know line why. That Scott Pilgrim when he goes, it feels like I learned something. <laughs> that's good. I definitely I think know. that, you know, when you hear a good sermon, for example, you don't want to think, wow, that guy was smart. You want to think, oh, Jesus is smart. Or, oh, I am learning a lot in this moment about myself and about the Lord, right? To, to walk away going, wow, that guy was smart, is actually, that means that that guy did not do a good job. Yeah. And I think the same thing goes for a film. You don't want to walk away going, wow, that whoever made that movie, he sure was, wow, he must be smart. Because ultimately, the job is to entertain. I think another movie that does a great job is Jurassic Park which has got some intense themes about, about, you know, just because you could doesn't mean you should. You shouldn't play God. You shouldn't try to tame nature and, and capitalize on, on science like that, right? But, and that's like the theme of the movie. It's huge. It's enormous in its scope and what it's trying to say. But it's like the most entertaining thing ever. Yeah. And there's an interview with, with Steven Spielberg while making Jurassic Park where he says... Yeah, you know, if I don't entertain the audience, then what am I even doing here? Yeah. Like, I guess, like, that's my job is ultimately to entertain. And it's like when he says that, he means something more than just a shallow spectacle. He means entertain in shallow ways as well as deep ways. Yeah. Although there, there are just some movies that you kind of appreciate them as this... It's not even about me, it seems like. They would have made this regardless of how I feel or what I think. And it and it can kind of be almost educating in that point, right? Like this movie, I just don't think Alex, if I were to be like, hey, I'll scroll in, that movie sucked, I didn't get it. He'd be like, so? You didn't get it. I, I made it. Yeah, and I you think know? that, that that type of artist or storyteller is pretty rare because they don't, make a lot of money yeah well yeah they won't succeed they're doing it for the sake of yeah their own art and they're like whatnot, philosophers then. it's a passion yeah, project totally. more than it is a money maker yeah. for yeah. them that's yeah. true and he he just happens to have been given these projects because of the success of his first film Ex Machina and he wrote some other films too he he wrote the movie uh, uh, Judge Dread <laughs> and uh and the beach was it 28 days later I think so. The zombie right. one. Oh my god! He said in the interview, he's like, that, yeah, that was my first film that I wrote or something oh, like yeah. that. I didn't know that. Directed by Danny wow. Boyle. That's a great yeah. movie. Yeah, so I think that it's good to have films that have a message, but it's best if that message is clear and tangible and even better if it's delivered through characters that are relatable. Yeah. Would we agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. Something that feels like... Well, actually, yeah, pretty much said it exactly how I was so thinking. After <laughs> after this, how do you feel about the movie? What would yeah, you Charlie, would you change your I rating? I actually at all? feel pretty much the same. In fact, I feel a little <laughs> bit good. I feel a little bit affirmed in my initial opinion of it. I thought because th- that's the thing uh, with some of these movies, you can feel almost a little bit bad about yourself. Like I didn't really like this, or I didn't get this, but I feel like I should, that's and I'm not all the time. I'm not smart. I, that's what my. Uh, fiance and I always have those conversations and I'm always telling her no like your opinion on it is good and you it, are the consumer it's important yeah exactly it's like just because other people liked it doesn't mean you should I want to hear your honest opinion and that's what honestly they talked about that in the whale too you know what that is honestly that's an interesting topic because I love to do the homework sometimes and I'll sometimes reach for meaning in projects that are dumb and like <laughs> pretentious or stupid or you know your average you know your the next A24 project I'll yeah. watch and go wow it was amazing and everyone else is like that was really depressing and I'm always trying to do that and and so it's sometimes it's my wife who's way more of a concrete thinker and she's like Riley that was that was horrible <laughs> she's like Riley Rings of Power was dumb and I'm like, no, see, they're trying to, you didn't see what they're trying to do. She's like, I did. It was terrible. <laughs> I don't want to watch that at all. <laughs> and I think that, I think you're right. Like your opinion of it is what it is for you. And there's an element of subjectivity there that if you don't like the Godfather, 
what are you going to do? Force yourself to like it? There's no yeah. way yeah. to do that. Because then you're just making up stuff. It's not genuine. So I think coming out of this, and do, after doing some more homework, I can see that Annihilation has some good themes that are impactful and like there's something to that they're saying that's good. But I don't think I would agree in the way that they told the story. Okay. That's my conclusion. That's good. That was a good combo. Thanks, Thanks, now, we're Thanks now we're at the airport. Thanks, Charlie. Now we're at the airport. And now I got to go to school. So, uh, yeah, this has been How to Watch Annihilation as a Christian. We are Pacific Parable. Plus me. And we'll see you at church. Thank you.